today on Trackflix, it's all about audio. What is up guys, welcome to another episode of Trackflix Friday. I'm Tristan Watkins and this is the show where we make episodes based on your comment suggestions. Today we are doing audio, such as the boom pole, the boom arm, the desk stand, as well as the Universal Rigs audio. Now these are uh, four items that I'll be showing you guys how to make, but because we have so many DIY items today, the video is gonna be long. So if you are looking for a specific thing, please check below, it'll save you a lot of time. Now, let's look at the parts list. Alright guys, it's another DIY project, so let's go ahead and get started. The first item on the list is a light bulb changer. Everything you see on the screen currently is part of that kit. You can purchase this at several stores for uh, under $20. And now we're laying out a couple different sized washers. Two quarter inch bolts, one one and a quarter inch long, and one a half inch long. Here is the universal rig we made from an episode prior. Here is the boom arm from another episode we used prior. And here is an item that we will be adding to our list and it is a shotgun microphone. You can use any one, but in this case we use the cheap but effective SGC microphone. Here are some hot shoes that we got for $10 for a total of five. That's $2 a piece and the best deal you'll find online. A three-way corner piece for half-inch PVC, three trap corners for half-inch PVC, and three end caps, as well as the eye stabilizer and a mount that I found for a GoPro online. The first step is going to be cutting half-inch PVC into one-inch segments. We're going to need six. I went ahead and cut down the boom arm. Here you can see, it's about one inch. We're going to take those one inches and put it into the trap corners, and you'll need those three and plug the six in. Here we have that three-way corner, plugging in all of our trap corners, and uh, you got this neat little device. You can maneuver it however you want, whatever best works for your situation, maybe a crab. But we're going to go flip it over and put those three end caps on the ends of it so it looks uh, nice and put together like. Again, you guys can adjust it however you want. Say you want the microphone on that end cap, or you just want to make a top out of it. Whatever looks cool. Here we have the shoe mount washer and quarter inch bolt by half inch length. And you can put it anywhere you want, whether you want on the top, the end, or just anywhere. It doesn't really matter. For me, I'm going to be putting it right on the top in the middle of the three-way corner. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the things that might get in the way when I go to assemble it. But first of all, we're going to need to make sure that our screw would fit in wherever we're trying to get it. And once you find out whether or not it fits, and of course mine will, since it's a half inch length and the pipe's diameter is a half inch, it'll fit in pretty nice. But now we gotta go cut a hole. Once you get that hole cut, it's always a good idea to sand it down so it looks nice and professional, even though we're making it out of PVC. Nobody needs to know. It's always a good idea to take your bolt and push it on the outside of the hole before you try to push it from the inside of the hole. This will avoid it getting stuck. As you can see, it threads in, which means it's probably a little too tight. So I go ahead and unthread it, make sure it's nice and clear and uh, you gotta maneuver that bolt around a little bit make sure that it'll come through the back side once it's through you're gonna need that washer and put that washer on the top and we're gonna grab the hot shoe and you just twist that on make sure it's nice and tight you don't want your microphone falling off and once your hot shoe is attached you can go ahead and put it back on all of the arms to it and again you don't have to make those pipe the half inches all right, we're gonna go ahead and take the shotgun mic we had after we put on the cover of it, and we're gonna loosen up the shoe mount, as well as making sure that the shoe mount is loose on the mic. Slide that in, and you can go ahead and get it nice and tight. And uh, there's your desk mount. All right, now this is a piece that we made last episode. It's called the Universal Rig. If you haven't checked out that video on how to make it, it's pretty cheap. I think it came out a little under $25, so check that out. And we're going to go ahead and just attach the shoe mount like we did on the last one. And uh, once you get your shoe mount on, it's pretty simple. Just like the last part, we loosen it up, grab our microphone, make sure it's loose on the mic, and slide it in, and get it nice and tight. And the nice thing is, your microphone's close enough to the camera, whether you're using a cell phone, GoPro, or DSLR, you can plug it straight in. Here we have the boom arm from one of our prior episodes, and we're just going to go ahead and drill a hole and sand down a cap for the half inch pipe, put a bolt through, 
Make sure once it's through on the other end, we go and take that washer just like we did for the desk mount. Put on our hot shoe, get it nice and snug. You want to make sure, like I said, that it's tight so your microphone doesn't fall off. Even though ours is only $30, you might be using an expensive road mic. What do I know? You might be rich. Sorry, the pole was a little under 10 foot and my room's a little bit smaller than that, so it's not in frame. Alright, so let's look at the light bulb changer kit. Here are all the elements of it. We won't need any of that. Just the suction cup piece. But it's only held in by a screw. So we're going to go ahead and take a screwdriver and unscrew the screw. Once you get that out, it'll pop right out. Take out that screw from the back. Sometimes it's a little pain. You gotta push it through with the screwdriver. Here we have it with the screw out. We'll need the bolt, the washer, a smaller washer, and a hot shoe. The smaller washer will go on the bolt and you'll slide that through. You gotta make sure that washer is small enough to go down inside. Here you can see the socket doesn't work. So what I used was pliers and just held down the bolt. Once you make sure that's in all the way, you can go ahead and take the larger washer, put that on the end, and screw on the hot shoe. Make sure it's nice and tight. Again, you might be using an expensive microphone. I'd hate to see that fall off. But we'll go ahead and screw that on the post, and the nice thing about this is it has an additional locking mechanism. So you can go ahead and tighten that up as well. Once that's all tight, you can go ahead and grab your microphone, and the same as the last two times we used the hot shoe, we're just going to attach that and tighten it down. So, yeah, it looks pretty good, but oh wait, how are we going to plug in the audio to anything? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're going to go ahead and unscrew the light bulb changer pole, and here we have an eye stabilizer and the GoPro attachment, typically used for bikes. We're going to go ahead and attach those two together, clamp it down on the post, and it's pretty secure. So now you can put in your phone, your tablet, whatever it is. Just make sure it's lightweight. You don't want too much weight on the end of this, but you're able to plug it into your phone, and it looks good. So here everything is all together. We got the boom arm at the top. In case you don't have anyone to hold your microphone, you can just use the arm we made last episode. And if you're having issues with it weighing too much, you can always change out the half inch PVC pipe for a half inch aluminum pipe and put it on the top of that microphone stand. But if you are a little more fortunate and you have someone able to hold the microphone, this is typically the best option because they can follow actors around in the scene. You'd be more likely to use this light bulb changer with the eye stabilizer, the GoPro bike attachment, and the hot shoe mount. And in the center we have the desk stand for your shotgun mic for any of your voiceovers or anything where you're just sitting stationary in an area. And on the bottom right corner we have the universal rig where you could put a DSLR or a cell phone or a GoPro on it and the hot shoe on top so you could attach the microphone and this is typically used for movement shots where maybe you have a, a moving interview and you want to stay flexible where you don't necessarily have time to set up tripods and lights this will give you a decent amount of audio so this is more used for whenever you're working by yourself and you don't necessarily have time to set up a boom arm you aren't sitting at a desk to use your desk stand and you don't have anyone helping out but maybe none of these options are optimal for you. Stick around after this commercial break whenever I give you guys some more options in the realm of sound, such as lav mics, voice recording apps, and clearing audio. Sponsor time! I want to personally thank Andy Car Design for all the sick logos they provided us with, as well as design help. Andy Car Design, best design on this side of the Mississippi. So to wrap up this video, we had four audio rigs, and maybe none of these worked out for you. In that case, I would highly suggest a lav mic. Now, if you aren't familiar with a lav mic or a lapel mic, it is essentially a microphone that will clip onto your actor or your talent, and then you'll get all of the nice crispness from the voice, which because it's so close. Now, wireless and wired mics are exactly as they sound. One has a wire and one doesn't, and typically the wireless lav mics are more expensive, ranging well above $50 price ranges, while a wired one... You're, you're looking a little bit lower, but still, they can both go well into the $300 ranges. So I try to stay away from lav mics for that reason. Now, if you are broke like me, you are looking towards the cell phone lav mic, which is always cheap and reasonable. It is essentially a lav mic that is wired, and you plug it into your cell phone, and using various apps, or possibly your own cell phone if it has the capabilities, you are able to put the cell phone in your back pocket, your front pocket, your chest pocket, wherever you want to conceal it. Maybe you want it out in the open, and you're able to get nice, clean audio. But maybe you are so broke you can't even afford a $30 microphone. In that case, I would suggest the voice app on most cell phone devices in the marketplace 
for free. Now during sections where I'm off camera, such as voiceovers for DIY projects, I will place my phone on the desk, set the voice recorder to enhance audio from vocals instead of music, and this will give you nice clear audio because a cell phone's designed for audio, so using it for audio just makes sense. But let's say you used one of our devices or your cell phone if you couldn't afford one of the devices and your audio still comes out really noisy. In that case, I would suggest an episode we made prior on how to clear up your audio using a free software online known as Audacity. But if you do use Final Cut, such as myself, in that video we also show how to clean up audio just using some built-in programs. Oh my gosh, dude, this was such a long episode. Yes, internet troll, this was a long video. But to conclude, we covered a lot of neat stuff, a lot of things that I've always wanted to know, but because of your suggestions, you finally pushed me to do it. To wrap up this video, if you liked it, let me know by liking the video down below. If you want to see more like it, let me know by subscribing to the channel. And as always, guys, if you have questions, leave those in the comment section below. You can send it to the Twitter over here. I think my Instagram is the same handle, so if you want to check me out there too, um, yeah. You can do that. Don't stop working hard.